What is up YouTube? Welcome back to another video. Guys, I know it has been a long time. Uh, man, it's been a long time. I apologize for that, but I'm gonna tell you what, we just haven't been we just haven't been doing too much to the old rig here. It's kind of been on the back burner and uh, working at the shop and doing stuff and just business stuff has been uh, been kind of the center of attention, I guess you could say. So uh, both my vehicles have kind of been on the back burner. And even just like, uh, I just haven't really wanted to spend any money on them, to be completely honest. Um, so that means there's a lack of content, I guess, for my channel. Yes, I know, I work on content every day in the shop. The problem is, when you do this kind of stuff, it makes jobs take quite a bit longer. And right now, with it just being me, Mark, and we have one other young kid working for us now, we just don't have the time to, to do that yet plan to get there anyway I'm not gonna sit here and keep ranting we're gonna dive right into what we're doing to the truck so you guys know that I have had cooling system problems with this truck I've basically done everything you can think of well there's one thing on here um, that we have not messed with and I I changed this one part a while ago and I, I'm still thinking that maybe it's it's faulty and uh, like something could be going on. I still get pressure in my cooling system over long periods of time. And if I run the truck hard, like towing, um, and it, to me, it just seems like it's not bleeding pressure off the way that it should. That That is what my mind is telling me. Um, I've done the low temp thermostats, you know, we, we got the HSP, uh, which actually this has nothing to do with it. This is just a look thing, but like I did thermostats and when I did thermostats, I just did this too, cause it looks cool. But like we've, we've done all the stuff in the cooling system that could be causing problems. So the last thing I am thinking of is this guy right here, the surge tank. We did a new cap, didn't change anything. Um, I for, thought for sure it was a bad cap. So the last thing I could think of to roll this out was to just go completely custom on the tank and go with like a metal one. So we're gonna get into showing you guys what we got going on. And another quick rant I wanted to go on was, you guys remember when I did the redhead steering box on this truck? Uh, it was about three years ago when I purchased it, I found the receipt and I maybe put 20,000 miles on it in those three years. I don't drive the truck that often. Uh, it's you know, obviously not at all in the winter, but my box is leaking like crazy. I'll show you guys the floor. It's been sitting here for maybe a week or two. I haven't even been driving it because it's leaking so bad that when I do drive it, it's just blowing oil all over the underneath of the truck. Um, frankly, it pisses me off a lot, but I called Redhead. My only option was um, I can take it out and send it in to be rebuilt. So. Um, Redhead is someone that we have access through at the shop and I've used them in customer vehicles before. I've heard nothing but good things about them. So truthfully to be honest, this is the, my last chance to them. If, if I put another box in and it leaks again, uh, I, we probably won't use them anymore. Um, I just think it's pretty sad that as low as miles as this thing has on it that it's already leaking this bad. And my power steering system, as you guys know, is about as easy as it can come. You know, we have high, nice high flow custom power steering lines. We have a power steering cooler. So that means added capacity. You can't ask for a better scenario for a steering box and it's still a seal failed. So that's what I mean, you know, maybe it was a dud, whatever. But just kind of wanted to let you guys know that. And let me know in the comments if, if you guys have had any experiences with Redhead. Um, the guy on the phone that I talked to was really nice and I'm going to give him a chance. I'm going to send it in. I do have to pay for it. Uh, and they're going to, they're going to tear it apart and fix it and whatever. It's still, it's still way cheaper than buying another box. I really do not want to have to do that. And, uh, so that's, that's what I decided to do. So we'll see how that goes. Anyway, end rant. Sorry. I'm looking at the time. That was, that was a lot longer than it probably should have been. So let's get into what we're doing here. Actually, one last thing before we do that, you can kinda 
kind of see how much oil is on the floor there. And then if we tilt you up, you can see how wet everything is. It's pouring right out of where the pitman arm goes onto the shaft. It's that lower seal. So that's what we're dealing with with that. Back to the surge tank. So what we ended up getting um, was this aluminum tank from HSP. And I went with HSP because a lot of my, um, obviously this is HSP, that pipe's HSP, my mouthpiece is HSP. And even my intake kind of resembles HSP. I wish it was an enclosed box, which someday I'd like to fab up my own custom box, like enclosed box, kind of like how HSP's is. So that might be something we get into someday, but not right now. So anyway, um, back to the tank. We got an HSP tank. And the main reason I decided to do this literally was for... Um, well, I, I don't know. I don't know where it is. Huh. Well, anyway, I was going to show you the cap. Well, let me see if I can find it here. So what I was saying is I, I actually don't have the bung for this. So this is a sight glass, three quarter inch stainless sight glass. Um, and I got an aluminum three quarter inch bung to thread this into that we are going to put on the tank uh, so that we can at least have a way to visually see where the coolant level is. Now, my first original thought was to put it here. But the way that this bung is, I don't think we're gonna be able to put it close enough. So it's gonna, it would be too high. Uh, the, fill, the fill level really needs to be like roughly halfway up the tank which is like right here so I think we're gonna end up having to go over here somehow but the basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna drain the cooling system on this thing real quick and we're gonna get this tank out and then I'm gonna put that tank in to kind of see I just want to be able to see where it's gonna make sense when it's down in there um, and then once we kind of figure out where we want to put it we're gonna drill a hole and then I'm going to take this to my one buddy, Jake, who is a very, very good welder. And he is going to weld the uh, aluminum bung on here for me because I can't weld aluminum. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to take you guys through all the, this whole process here. So first up, let's get the coolant drained out of this thing. Still, in my opinion, one of the best mods on a Duramax is that XDP drain. Um, absolutely love that thing. It makes draining the coolant on one of these trucks so easy. So, I uh, also forgot to even mention how, obviously, you guys should notice where we are. Um, I'm at my parents' house in the garage here. And uh, that is because this is just something I thought I could do at home. The, the shop is completely packed right now and I kind of just didn't want to take up space there plus with the steering box my truck is going to be down and not movable or drivable until I get that box back so I'd rather it be sitting here not in the way and whatever um, part of I guess being being owners of the garage is the fact that uh, everybody else comes first yep. you guys you guys come first customers come first our stuff is uh, always last on the chopping block. So we're going to let that drain out there. And then we can get that tank out. Alright, so we got the we got the HSP tank set in over here. Fits pretty nice. Lots of clearance. So the only thing I've noticed is man, it would really be nice if that sight glass was somewhere here. Because that's right where you can 
see very easily. The problem is, is like I said, if we take this and we put it here above the other bung, like so, um, I, I just don't think I'm going to be able to have it far enough down that we're not going to be overfilling the tank. Because if, oops, because if we're if we're overfilling this, we're going to be right back to square one. This is this bung here is where the the level sensor is supposed to go, which they give you a new one here. That is where this is supposed to go. Um, I'm basically thinking maybe at this point after I see it in here, I'm kind of wondering if I should get a sight glass that would thread into this bung that's already here for that sensor and then we just move that sensor somewhere else. Um, I think we could personally, it'd probably look better anyways if we put that sensor somewhere back here out of the way. So that might be the avenue we actually take. Uh, I might have to order a different sight glass and a different bung. I think that one that I had was three quarter inch. I'm going to assume this is a half inch NPT size. So I'd have to just get a half inch sight glass. I think that might be the route we take guys. Still, still we'll get a little custom, but I think that's going to be the way to go actually. Now that I, now that I get to see this in here, um, that's why I wanted to put this in here and see what it was going to look like for that exact reason. So I think that's going to be the new plan. We're going to get a different sight glass that'll thread right in there and then we will get um, a bung for the sensor and put the sensor somewhere else. I'm going to look here and kind of see where we should put the sensor. What I'm thinking we're going to do is I got to fit you guys in here. I think we're going to put that level sensor right hang on like right here somewhere um so it'll be kind of hidden you won't see it on the, you won't see it on this side and you won't see it up here uh with looking with the tank down in the truck i kind of don't know why they don't put it there in the first place that way it's not an eyesore but uh yeah we'll we're gonna run with that we're gonna do a sight glass here and then we'll we'll do we'll get a bung for that sensor and put that back there so um, we will pick up with this video when we get a, a bung back in a new bung and then we will be going to Jake's house to weld that up and then uh, we'll have to get it powder coated and then we can get it in here okay guys we are finally back here we got the parts in we are at the shop um, because we have some drilling to do so this was the bung we ended up going with from Moroso, part number there. And what I liked about this was you'll see we'll drill to this diameter and then it'll sit nice and flush against the wall. So uh, it won't stick out like that other one was going to. And then you can see right here, we got our half inch sight glass, threads right in there. It's literally the same one, just half inch. So that's gonna end up working out really, really nice. So you can see that very nice when it's in the truck. And then we got our area, our hole marked out right there. So we're gonna punch a hole in this for that inner diameter there. And then that will be like that. We'll put our level sensor there. You'll never even see it in the truck because this is the back side. And then uh, we will be taking a trip over to Jake's to have him weld this baby in. Okay, got it all drilled up there. See how it sits down in there nice and flush like that. That's what we were going after. Um, in some ways, I'm kind of wondering if we should have put this a little bit lower because I just I just basically tried to match the same height where they were putting it before. Um, but this is the sensor, so I feel like, you know, that doesn't really give you much of a window for that sensor to trigger, you know. And then 
you're gonna have the low coolant light on so whatever hopefully hopefully it ends up all right there but I'm, I'm kind of almost wondering if I should have put it down here to give you a more of a threshold of um, how low your coolant is or whatever so that message doesn't come up but it's all right we'll make it work all right guys it's a Saturday morning here <clears throat> we are at my buddy Jake's house and uh, going into his garage right now we're gonna weld this tank up gonna get a little bit of footage of that for you guys and then uh, we're gonna have to get the tank powder coated after that all right guys we are back home here <clears throat> we got the tank all done just wanted to show you guys Jake's weld he did a fantastic job I knew he would he's a very very good welder gonna try and use him for other stupid little things like this you can see got that bung all welded in looks just like these other welds perfection so now we gotta get this powder coated the orange and then we will get it installed into the truck that's the next step and again big thanks to Jake for killing it on that all right guys it is several weeks later um, we got the parts back from powder coat uh, I took these to a good buddy of ours by the name of Jake Patterson he kind of does this stuff on the side so uh, figured I'd let him try this and the big thing was is he was willing to do these badges which are this are the gray color same color as my wheels and they all match this badge here MDDP badge get our logo on there so basically what where this is gonna go I already I already put this tube back in and this is going to go right here like so oh man is that gonna look great I can't wait basically what we're gonna have to do is just cut a bunch of small pieces of double side taped and stick that thing back on there but this is the main thing the tank we got her back that beautiful well by my buddy Jake Mohan so basically we're gonna get uh, the the sight glass in there get the sensor in there and we can get this tank installed into the truck we'll get the hoses hooked up and uh, probably not tonight but tomorrow night hopefully I'll get the I'll bring the vac system home from the shop and we'll put coolant in this thing uh, some other stuff I've done I haven't videoed because I wasn't really part of this video but I did get a PSC high flow power steering pump my power steering pump was giving me problems my steering box is also back in I sent it to redhead and got it back it it, it tested good it, that wasn't the source of my power steering leak so I did a new pump um, we also this will be a future video we'll be putting a compressor in the back for the airbags and I'll be able to control it with my phone or with the remote here so pretty excited to get that because every time I haul something with this thing I can't stand having to manually air it up so uh, let's get that uh, tank all set set up here tank is in all buttoned up so I actually reuse this old radiator hose that um, well expansion tank hose I reuse the old one because it already had some bends and it actually I was able to get it to go under this intake nice without not really rubbing on the intake on the underneath so I didn't use the new one I think the new one they wanted you to just go right across I wanted it to kind of go underneath um, but you can see our sight glass right there sensor in the back there I'm pretty happy with it um, the sight glass is definitely not as visible as I would like but it, at least it's something you know you can look down there and as long as you see water in it will be good but uh, 
be curious to see when it actually gets water in there how it looks but that's going to be tomorrow's job and then uh, also going to try and get some tape and get that thing on so you can get the final look of that too all right so we are back on the truck here today i got some 5 16 coolant line for this breather here we're going to root it way down into the fender so that if it does overflow it doesn't make a huge mess like the old one used to and then i brought the air tool home so we can fill the cooling system you can see here i got this badge all taped up with some little tiny pieces of tape so we're going to stick that on there and see what she looks like there it is oh man does that look good i couldn't be more happy with how that that came out i just think these colors the gray and the orange they they look so good on each other and I wanted that that way for a long time so I'm glad I went through the hassle to do it because that that makes the engine bay just pop a little bit more especially since we got the MDDP one over here oh just in love in love well, let's get this cooling system filled up I can't remember if I've showed this on my channel before this tool that we, we use this thing all the time at the shop um, if you're messing with cooling systems this thing is a must it's like 150 bucks for the kit this thing is a lifesaver saves a lot of time too uh, actually the last time I was messing with my cooling system I couldn't get this thing to take more than a gallon of coolant and that's actually what forced me to end up getting this and then you know I just leave it at the shop we use it there but how this thing works is you hook up your compressed air to this side and then it's gonna blow air out this tube here um, sometimes it will blow a little tiny bit of coolant so I try and point it into a bucket but I will not probably be able to do this with one hand and then you'll watch this vac gauge go up I like to set it normally right around 25 over here and then you'll close the valve disconnect this and then we will connect this hose which also has a valve on it little screen on there I'm gonna put about four gallons of coolant in this bucket and then we'll hook that up and open the valve back up and it will suck all of the coolant back in I'll put it on a time-lapse here so you can kind of see how it works but very very cool tool definitely recommend it So, cooling system is now filled. I hooked up my breather line, rooted it all the way down to the bottom of the fender there. Um, so now what you would wanna do is we gotta get the truck running and we gotta get it up to operating temperature and get those thermostats to open. So basically you go for a drive, you leave your cap off um, and you go for a drive, you make sure it gets warm, make sure you watch the thermostats open if you can. Um, and then you'll bring it back, shut it off, let it completely cool off, and then after it's cooled off, you can set uh, set your tank, you know, top it off for whatever you wherever level you need to be at. Then you can cap it. That's how to make sure that if there is any little air bubbles, it'll it'll work its way out on that first heat up. And when you leave the cap off, it it you know obviously rises to the surface. So that's that. That's going to wrap it up for this video, guys. I appreciate you tuning in. Hope you guys learned a couple things. Um, as always, I appreciate your support on the channel. I know I'm not doing as many videos as I should be, but I'm trying to do the best I can. So, um, <clears throat> But I think that's a good little way to kind of clean up your engine bay, get rid of that plastic, ugly tank, and get something a little bit nicer and a little more just old school and with a nice, reliable cap. And we'll see if it makes a difference. I hope it does. If not, I think I've exhausted my options and I think we're going to be doing some, some head gaskets on this thing or something because I really don't know what else it could be at this point. But hoping it's not it, but we'll see. But um, we'll catch you on the next one, guys. Thanks again.